Hey, hey everybody, my name is Ross Myers of Bunker Munitions and today I want to make a video for the first time gun buyer. So I've had several first time gun buyers come through the door that were a little hesitant or unsure about the process and just had a lot of questions that I love answering. So I wanted to put a video out there for anybody that might be considering purchasing their first firearm, what you can expect, what you need to bring, and how the whole process goes. So, what I need you to bring when you come is a government issued photo ID. A uh, driver's license is most common for first time gun buyers, but I have had people come that bring their weapons carry license with them. They got it before they bought their gun. That's completely not necessary. It's great if you have it, but you don't need to bring it. And the ID that you bring needs to be current and up to date. So, even if you're license isn't expired but if you moved two years ago and your current address is not listed on it it needs to have your current address there so another thing you need to know is to buy a long gun such as a rifle or a shotgun you must be 18 years old or older and a pistol is 21 years old or older so just know that walking through the door that there is an age gap in between buying a long gun and a handgun. So when you bring your ID, we're gonna go over some paperwork together. It's a six page 4473. You can find these online, but I'm going to do a close up here in a little bit and kind of go over the process with you. We'll fill that out together. There's parts that me as the seller have to fill out like what kind of gun you're buying, the serial number for it, the caliber of it, and that's a lot of if your gun were to be stolen and recovered, we can use this paperwork to track it down, see where it came from, and I say, hey, I sold that gun to John Smith back in 2019. And then we can go knock on your door and say, hey, we found your gun for you. But the 4473 is a big part of the process. Another part of the process is running background checks. So every time you come into a store, whether it's your first gun or your hundredth gun, we're going to have you fill out a 4473 and run a background check on you. Now the caveat for Georgia is the weapons carry license. So if you do have a weapons carry license, I do not have to run a background check on you. I can mark a uh, box on this form that says you provided me with your valid current weapons carry license and we go we forgo the whole NICS background check system but that system isn't complicated the entire process from the time you set a gun on the table and say this is what I want to the time you're out the door with it takes a, about 20 minutes it's, it's not a long or complicated process at all now for this video I'm gonna assume that you have a gun picked out you know exactly what you want I will do more videos for beginners that cover what kind of gun you need, some reputable brands, talk about what, what you plan on using it for, whether it's home defense or your first hunting rifle, and I can definitely help you through that process as well, but for, for this video we're going to assume that you have one picked out, it's sitting on the counter and you want to walk home with it that day. So let's take a look at this 4473. Okay, so here's your form 4473. It has the information I talked about earlier that you're going to provide, such as your name, place of birth, your height, weight, sex, um, general information like that. Down here at section 20 is a series of questions that will continue on to the next page. It's a six-page document. Three of them are questions that we will answer together, and the other three pages are instructions for if you get stumped on how to answer a question. So the most important one and one that a lot of people have questions about is 21A. That asks if you are the actual transferee or buyer of the firearm listed on this form. So you must be the person that is buying the firearm to fill out this form. And I'll explain that and th that's a question to catch straw purchases which I'll explain when we go back up to the main table, but that's what that question is. The rest of them are things like if you are a felon being convicted of 
any court for uh, domestic crimes, family violence, things like that, child endangerment, if you're a fugitive from justice, or 20E. So this one right here asks if you are an unlawful user or addicted to marijuana, a depressant, stimulant, narcotic, or any other controlled substance. So if you were to live in a state such as Colorado where marijuana is legal, federally it is still prohibited. So if you were to be a marijuana user, that federally prohibits you from owning a firearm. So, continue on the next page, we have more yes or no questions, such as, have you ever been educated as a mental defective, or have you ever been committed to a mental institution that would make you a prohibited person, uh, discharged from the armed forces under dishonorable conditions, subject to any court orders um, or pro family protection orders, have you ever been conducted or convicted of family violence, which we kind of already went over, renounce your U.S. citizenship, or are you an alien illegally or unlawfully in the United States? Now, there are ways where uh, immigrants in the United States that aren't U.S. citizens can purchase a firearm, and I have come across that in the short time that I've been in business. And there, there's ways to do it, but there's a lot more paperwork and information that we need, but most people aren't going to fall into that category. The next part of the form is for me to fill out. This denotes what kind of gun I'm selling you, what type of identification you provided to me, if it's current, and if I need to run a background check on you. If I do run a background check, I fill in these boxes denoting what the results of the background check were, whether I can proceed or whether it was denied. There's also an option for delayed, which I have had happen one time now, delayed can happen for a multitude of reasons, whether the site was just overwhelmed at the time, a piece of information was put in incorrectly, and they're trying to figure out exactly who this person is you're running a background check on. And the one time I've had it happen, the FBI called me the next morning, for almost immediately, and said, go ahead and proceed the, with the cell. And I was able to call the gentleman and tell him that he could come pick up his firearm. But if that background check comes back anything other than proceed, I'm not allowed to let you walk out of the store with the firearm. So when you come to buy a handgun from me, or any gun for that matter, I'm gonna give you a pamphlet. These are provided free to me by the ATF. It's the Youth Handgun Safety Act notice. It goes over a lot of information on safe storage, and just how to properly keep your firearm away from people that you don't want them getting their hands on it. I'm also going to ensure that your gun comes with a chamber lock. So most new guns do come with a chamber lock, but if you were to have bought a used gun, they're not always kept up with. So I have a supply of these on the shelf, and before you walk out the door, I'll make sure that your gun has a chamber lock that you can slip through and make sure that no one but you can unlock this and be able to put around in the chamber. So a few other questions that I've gotten that I want to go over is what a straw purchase is exactly. We talked about that on the form 4473. It was question 20 section A. It asked, are you the actual buyer or transferee of this firearm? So what that means is that you can't buy the gun for someone who is a prohibited person. If I were to have two people come in, look at a firearm, one guy is sitting there picking them up, holding them, testing them out, and you know, kind of nodding his buddy, say, hey, this is the one that I want, or if they're even bold enough to just straight hand the cash over to the other person so he can buy the gun for him, that's a straw purchase. The, the person is probably federally prohibited, and he wants his buddy to be the one pretending to buy the gun, so that he can pass the background check. Now, what that doesn't mean is that you can't buy the gun for a gift. So if you wanted to buy your father a rifle for Father's Day, or if you saw a really good deal on a gun that you wanted to buy thinking you could turn around and resell it and make a profit on that gun, you would mark that you are the actual buyer of that gun. Because 
it's becoming your property and you're going to give it to somebody in good faith that they're not a prohibited person and then it, it, it's you buying the gun. So also in private party sales in Georgia, there does not need to be a background check. So it's your personal property. You can sell it to another person without coming to an FFL for a background check, but you, it, it's the good faith that you need to make sure the person you're selling this to is not a prohibited person. So I've got some notes here to make sure that I touch on all the points that I want to go to. So I went over kind of who are prohibited people. That was the section 20, all those questions after A that asked if you were the actual buyer of the firearm and then the rest of them are you know a felon you know addicted to illegal drugs are you a uh, have you been convicted of domestic violence of any sort um, illegal alien denounced your US citizenship those kind of things do make you a prohibited person federally from owning a firearm so some more questions that I get or can you carry a firearm without a weapons carry permit? And absolutely you can. So in the state of Georgia, it says that you're, in your home, you are allowed to have a firearm. And in Georgia, your vehicle is considered a, an extension of your domicile. So you can have a gun in your vehicle, no problem. If you were to come to the store, pick one up, get pulled over, it, it's completely fine. Now, you can carry long guns, such as rifles and shotguns, in plain view, and that, that's not an issue, or an unloaded pistol in a case. So, I said you could have them in your home, and you could have them in your vehicle by extension, but let's say you found one of your grandfather's 1911s, you care nothing about it, want to take it to another store to sell it, walk into a pawn shop to sell it. Um, the point from where you exit your vehicle to where you enter that building, you're technically on public property. But having that gun in a case and unloaded allows you to move that gun from point A to point B without, without fear of crossing any red tape. The other one that we talked about, uh, the vehicle carry, it being an extension of your domicile, is Georgia Code Section 16.11.126. That's the one that says your vehicle is just like your home, your place of business. You're allowed to have firearms there without your license. So um, another question I get asked a lot is the weapon signs. Like on the front of Target, it says it's a weapon-free zone, no weapons permitted. Are those legally binding? And the answer is no. There is no laws in the Georgia codes that say private businesses can make laws prohibiting you from carrying firearms on the property. Now, as a private company, they can make it their policy. So you need to be very careful about that because I've gone into plenty of stores while I've been concealed carrying. If you're concealed carrying correctly, no one knows you have it on you. Um, but if you're open carrying something like that, they approach you and say, sir, this is a gun-free store. We're going to have to ask you to leave. Just just leave. Be, be smart about it. They are a private company. They can make their own rules. They can ask you to leave. And though there is no law about it, they can trespass you from the property for not following the rules on their premises. And just don't be one of those guys that make us think about it and don't do that. That gives everybody in the gun community a bad rep, and we we as a whole would prefer you not do that. That just makes us look bad. Now, there are some places that are off-limits in Georgia, and a lot of them are common-sense places. Um, school safety zones, school buses, things like that. You're not allowed to carry a firearm. There was a law that was passed, I believe, back in 2017 that says you're allowed to carry a concealed weapon on college campuses, but there is a long line of asterisks behind that law that says, yes, you can do it, but you can't do it, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, a long list of places that are prohibited on college campuses. So legally, yes, you can, but there's so many prohibited areas and asterisks to that law that it's better just left alone and not to do it. 
unless you want to do all the digging and find it out on your own, to me, it's, it's just not worth it. Other areas are secured areas of an airport. So this is another really good question. If you needed to travel with your firearm, let's say you had a pistol that you wanted to take on the plane with you, of course you can't take it on the plane, but you can check it into your luggage. There are TSA approved safes that you need to have the gun in before you go to the baggage counter. You walk up to the baggage counter and say, hey, I have a lockbox here with a pistol in it. It happens all the time. They know what to do. It's, they give you a tag, they tag the gun, and it gets checked with the rest of your baggage. Same thing for if you wanted to go to Wyoming and go big game hunting. You could potentially check your rifle into the baggage claim area. It's also pretty simple if you know where you're going to be big game hunting at just to ship the rifle there ahead of time. But some grievances I have with the UPS, FedEx, and USPS right now, you might end up not having your rifle there when you get there. But that's me venting on a different story uh, with some late shipments I've been receiving. So other areas are, of course, courthouses, government buildings, things like that you can't carry in. Jails and prisons go without saying, hopefully. State and mental health facilities are off limits. Um, 150 feet within a polling place, so while elections are taking place, you cannot carry your firearm while you go vote, or if you're standing outside the voting area, you know, polling or trying to convince people to vote one way or the other, within 150 feet of that, you cannot have your firearm with you. And one that I did not know, but I actually learned when I did, was doing some research for this video, was on the premises of a nuclear power facility. Now, I, to my knowledge, I've never stepped foot on a nuclear power facility, but if I ever have the opportunity, I now know that I cannot carry my firearm there. So, those are just some common questions that I hope I've helped answer. Um... The entire process for buying a gun is really straightforward. You come in, bring me a valid photo ID, government issued photo ID, it can't be something like a school ID. It needs to be in date, current residence. Um, if it's a driver's license or something like that, I'm gonna run a background check on you through the FBI NIC system, which stands for National Instant Criminal Background Check System. Um, those come back really quickly with the proceed or denied. Hopefully, if you're coming to buy a firearm, you know that you're gonna get a proceed. I've never had someone be denied. Like I said, I've only had one delay and the guy was able to come back the next day and, and walk out with his rifle. There's no waiting period in the state of Georgia. So if you were to, to buy a pistol, everything goes clean. We fill out the paperwork together. 20 minutes, you're out the door and you're on your way home. So I do plan to do some more videos for first time gun owners. Um, like I said, what kind of gun you need to suit your needs, and uh, I enjoy doing that kind of thing. I love meeting with people and talking and saying, hey, you know, have you looked at this brand? Have, have you thought about this? And uh, I just enjoy helping folks and bringing them into the Second Amendment community, the, the firearm world. Uh, it really makes my day when somebody comes through my shop and tell me it's their first firearm and even though they're a little hesitant about the process I try to say hey it's not hard this is all there is to it and and well send you home happy so again my name is Ross Myers with BunkerMunitions.com thank you for watching and if you have any questions feel free to to leave me a comment or message me directly and I'll answer them the best that I can see you on the next one